My name's Ethan Braid. Today we're going to talk about yield curve inversion, what yield curve inversion means. We're going to analyze some past yield curve inversions, and then we're going to look at how long it typically takes from when the yield curve inverts until a recession might show up. Yield curve inversion is a fancy way of saying that short-term interest rates are higher than long-term interest rates. This only happens during unusual economic times. Most of the time, we would expect that short-term interest rates are going to be lower than long-term interest rates. Yield curve inversion is measured as the spread between a long-term security, such as the 10-year U.S. Treasury, and a short-term security, such as the three-month T-bill. And that is exactly what this chart shows that we're looking at. This chart shows the spread between the 10-year U.S. Treasury and three-month T-bill for the last 62 years. Let me give you a simple example of how to calculate the yield spread between the 10-year Treasury and the three-month T-bill. Let's say that the three-month T-bill yields 5.5% and the 10-year Treasury yields 4 we would subtract the three-month T-bill from the 10-year treasury, and our difference is the spread. In this case, in my example, it would be a minus 1.5%. Not too far from where we're at today. If, on the other hand, we had a 5.5% 10-year treasury yield and a 4% three-month T-bill yield, then our spread is going to be a positive 1.5%. When we have a positive number, anything over zero, then we call this a positively sloped or normal yield curve with longer rates being higher than shorter rates. If we have a negative spread, such as we do right now, then we have short rates being higher than long rates and a negatively sloped yield curve. This chart shows yield curve inversion as the area below the zero line, and a normal yield curve or positively sloped yield curve is the area above the zero line. So here's our zero line. And you can see that most of the time, the area of the chart is above zero, which means we have a positive slope or a positive normal yield curve. The gray bands on this chart are recessions. We have every recession for the last 62 years, all eight of them, shown on this chart. And what becomes very clear is that the yield curve inverts right before the recession. We can see it over and over. Inversion, recession, inversion, recession, inversion, recession, inversion, recession. And look where we're at today. Now let's take a look at some past inversions up close and measure the time from when the inversion started until the recession showed up. 1973, inversion begins, seven months later, the gray band, recession starts. 1978, inversion begins, 16 months later, recession starts. 1980, inversion begins, 10 months later, recession starts. 1989, here's the inversion, 14 months later, 1990 recession. Year 2000, here's the inversion, 11 months later, Gray band is the recession. 2006, here's our inversion. 23 months later, here's the recession. This is the one that I find really interesting. Here's the inversion in the spring, March of 2019, well before COVID started. COVID didn't show up until December of 2019. But look at this. The curve was inverted well before COVID. It's just really intriguing to me. Throughout the year, we were seeing signs that a recession might not be too far away. And then, what do you know? Here we are, recession in February of 2020. If we take the average time from when the curve inverted until the recession began over the last seven recessions, we come up with 13 months. Now, that's interesting because we're presently 15 months into the current yield curve inversion. Here is the one outlier yield curve inversion with respect to how long it took 
from when the inversion started until the recession showed up. In 1965, you can see that the yield curve inverted, but the recession did not begin until four years later. If we include this outlier, the average time from when the inversion begins until the recession shows up is 17 months. Here is a close look at the current inversion. Two things that we should take note of. Number one, the magnitude of this inversion is far greater than anything we've seen in the last 60 years. Number two, this inversion is already 15 months. If we consider that the last seven recessions have been preceded by 13 months on average of a yield curve inversion, we're already past the average. Now let's put it all together. There have been eight recessions over the last 60 plus years and every single recession without exception was preceded by an inverted yield curve. On average, the yield curve inversion happened 13 months before the recession showed up. If we include the outlier from 1965, then the average becomes 17 months. Right now, the inversion is at 15 months. And oh, by the way, we have the largest inversion right here that we've had in the last 60 years. You can see that the inversion here is greater than anything we've ever seen before. The question we should all be asking ourselves is why is this time any different? If we look at the past and we see that yield curve inversion has been a very accurate, 100% accurate predictor of recessions, and now we're in a very unusual economic time with an inverted yield curve, and we're 15 months in to the yield curve inversion, why wouldn't we get a recession in the next, say, six months to a year or so? Why wouldn't that happen? I'll wrap up with this story. I started my career in the late 1990s, and I remember distinctly what it was like when the yield curve inverted about March of the year 2000. People talked about it for a little bit in the media, and everyone brushed it off. And there was all this talk of a soft landing. And then, of course, the recession came and caught many people off guard in 2001. But if that wasn't enough, I lived through it again in January of 2006, the yield curve inverted. And at that time, there was a whole bunch of talk about a soft landing, especially as we got into 2007. It went on for a while, as you can see, 23 months. But when the recession hit, it hit hard and it caught so many people off guard and many people were bankrupted, had their lives turned upside down as a result of that recession. If we have a predictor that's 100% accurate for the last eight cycles, and it's telling us that there's going to be a recession, maybe we should consider it. I hope that we don't get a recession, and maybe we will get a soft landing, but the odds of the soft landing are pretty low. If, if you've seen other videos I've put out, I'd estimate it's a 10% likelihood. Again, I hope there's no recession, it's not fun. Nobody wants to go through that. But we should all take a step back and just think about this. Hey, we've got a warning sign here. It's flashing red. We really ought to rethink what we're doing with our investments, our financial planning, and how we're approaching the future. I hope this video was helpful. I hope this video gets you thinking, helps you better analyze your investments, and improve your families financial plan.